This episode of the Hoopercast is brought to you by Letterboxd. Right now, listeners of our show have the chance to win a free one-year pro account upgrade on Letterboxd. For those of you who don't know, Letterboxd is a social network for film lovers that allows you to track rate, and review the films you watch. You can follow other members to get recommendations. You can publish lists of films like your top 10 for the year and a lot more. Letterboxd is free to use. There's no subscription fee, but a pro account is going to provide you with additional features such as a customized summary of your past year's viewing. If you already have an account, then you get a one-year extension free. If you want to enter, All you have to do is listen to our show, and we will read the code word at random. Then you're going to send us an email at hoopercast at gmail.com, enter the code word in the subject line of the email, and make sure you include your letterboxed username. The winner will be selected during the last show of each month. You can also follow our show on Letterboxd. Just search Hoopercast. That's letterboxd.com, L-E-T-T-E-R-B-O-X-D.com, letterboxd.com. Everybody, welcome to the Hoopercast. I'm Connor, and that is Dustin over there. Dustin, unmute yourself. <laughs> Dude, I always forget to do that. My gosh. I'm over here like chatting up a storm. I'm looking out the window and you're like, you're like, you got this grin, like, hell yeah, I'm Dustin. I'm like, oh man, I can't hear you do. Yeah, though, man. Dude, I've gotta I gotta like put a sticky note on my computer, like unmute yourself. It's pretty. It's pretty sure. tough when we change the workflow of this show daily. <laughs> Apparently, like, dang. We are the Hoopercast, and if you are watching this on YouTube, you've come to the right place. There is no right or wrong place to watch the show or listen to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you are watching this YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, there's a free video version on Patreon. You can get for a measly little dollar. Um, if you want to listen to the full episode for free, you can get that on any number of podcasting, um, platforms as in this, uh, picture on the infinity gauntlet, um, radio, public stitcher, breaker, cast box, pocket casts, Google podcasts, um, uh, stitcher and Spotify. Um, lots of places to uh, to find us, and also a bunch of places on social media to uh, to check us out. Um, Facebook, Twitter, at Hypercast, at Dustin Weldon, at Connor underscore Dempsey, um, Blogger, Tumblr, SoundCloud, MR Hooper dash one, and of course YouTube, Hoopercast. Um, so yeah, there's all that stuff. Yeah. Dustin, yes, we're gonna talk about some films today. Let's um, do it. It is uh, it is time for us to discuss I Tanya, which we both um, have seen. Yes, I was able to. Now you can't. People listening is certainly not in this episode. Can't get this. Can't get the same deal I got. But I saw that. Did you see this in theaters? I did not. Where did you see it? Did you just? Uh, it's on Hulu. Everything. God, you and Hulu, man. Well, I know, right? So if you have, if you are a Hulu member, you can see I Tanya for. Um, sort of free. Um, if you are like me, you noticed that this was the 99 cent rental on iTunes that week. Hey. So you took full advantage of that. So I watched this in the <clears throat> comfort and safety of my bedroom, yes. which is neither comfortable nor safe. I don't want to know. Anyway, um, I, Tanya, um, is a, is a, is a, is a, I was going to say a fun little movie. Um, it's certainly, uh, certainly very stylistic. Um, yeah, yeah. I just don't know who direct, I can't remember who directed it. Dustin, will you set this up? It's uh, Craig Gillespie, um, who previously directed films like million dollar arm, um, finest hours, Lars and the real girl, Mr. Woodcock. Um, so he's done, you know, some things you've heard of, um, but he's not a name you would have, like you would recognize. Um, the movie was written by um, Stephen Rogers, who I like to think is just Captain America, but is he's definitely not. Um, Stephen Rogers wrote um, Love the Coopers, P.S. I Love You, Kate and Leopold, Hope Floats. Um, so he's done quite a few things as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, But again, not a household name by any stretch. Sure. Yeah. Um, 
what did what did you I'll, I'll tell you what i gave this film just off okay. the top because i always feel like the more we dance around our ratings the harder it is to actually review the film sure sure um i gave this film four stars yeah me too um this is the story Ooh, of Tanya harding yeah man um here you know what <laughs> let's do something that only the video people can appreciate high five me to your left one two three uh, did that work no <laughs> what you you want like a, a completely parallel to the go, camera go, like... go slow one two okay. three oh that worked that was yeah good. all right okay anyway um this is a, a film about tanya harding who was an olympic figure skater um and i think the i think this is across the late 80s to early 90s yeah. um early to mid 90s um and this is about her sort of rise to prominence in figure skating her relationship with her um her now ex-husband um i forgot his actual name though jeff um, i don't remember she, his last name it was, it was jeff um oh it was like oh whatever who cares i can't remember um, jeff galuli J- galuli that's galooly, right yeah, yeah. jeff galuli um played by sebastian stan tanya harding is played by um <clears throat> margot robbie mm-hmm. her mother is played by um allison janney who won best supporting actress for this role and is she's well just deserved. A, she's just a national treasure, I think, at this <clears throat> point. Yeah, I, I love Allison Chaney. Me too. Um, I don't see enough of her. She was she was really great in Juno, and then I just yes. she hadn't been in that many things that I've seen her in um, since. But uh, people obviously who watch The West Wing know and love Allison Chaney. People yeah. who who um, I think she was in Masters of Sex for like a season long arc. Uh, yeah. She's on that sitcom Mom with Anna Faris. Mm-hmm. Apparently, they're both really good in that show. Yeah. Um, and Margot Robbie, of course, is in a lot is is really popular right now. Um, and she's a great actress. And yeah. um, and this is the story um, about her rising to prominence, her on her relationship with Jeff, and the scandal surrounding the injury of Nancy Kerrigan, who was her friend and rival, um, leading up to the Olympics. Um, yep. <clears throat> I gave this a four stars, as I said. Um, this film, uh, I'm trying to figure out where I should start. Um, this film did everything that Whiplash did, yeah, but better for me, mm, yeah. I recently saw a video of, of a guy um, comparing uh, Whiplash and Black Swan and how they're both very similar mm-hmm. about um, about an obsessive person wanting to be the best at what they do yeah. and the similarities and differences in the story structure of the two and then the endings and all that. And then you mentioned Miles Teller. It's just been a very Miles, Miles, Miles Teller day for me too. Yes. Um, um, so, but this film presents an um, this is similar to Whiplash in that they present to you, you know, a main character who wants to be the best at something, but they also give you an anti-hero supporting mentor character. Um, and Whiplash is J.K. Simmons, and this film it is Allison Janney as as uh, L- Lavana Harding. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're trying to make their subject the best, and they're not nice. They don't care about being nice about it. They don't care if they're abusive. They don't care what the cost. They're gonna make them the best. That is their mission. Yep. That's their that's their that's their function. Yeah. Uh, the difference here is I like Tanya Harding. Yeah, I did yeah, not yeah, yeah. like Miles Teller in yeah, the film. Yeah, yeah. I grew yeah. to dislike him. And yeah. the difference here is they present me a person who is a flawed individual. She's she's not entirely um, innocent in her physical altercations with her ex husband. Um, not to say that it's ever justified that he hits her, um, but like she's she's not you know she's not a delicate little flower either. Right, right. Um, but I like her nonetheless because I feel like she deserves success. Yeah. Um, despite uh, everything else that goes on, um, so even though she's can be in the wrong or she's unreliable as a narrator, um, that's part of the charm of the film. And by the end of it, I sympathize with her because she's ultimately, without getting into you know spoilers, although this is up for rent, so we could spoil it. It's sure. also a true story. Um, yeah. But we don't have to say that exactly how it ends. But I think that she's ultimately a victim of circumstance. I don't yeah. think that the events in this film ultimately are her fault. And yeah. therefore I sympathize with her. Yeah. And um, it's a great film. It's got really great direction, it's got really great performances, interesting characters. It's a really good film and people should see it. Um, and, and I just would also like to add that um, it, it, it's, it's sort of like a black comedy in a way. Um, yeah. to some extent i mean especially the way they present domestic violence because these yeah. actors are are hitting each other i mean i'm it's it's a little unsettling like you know they he chased her through the house he yanks her down by her but like it's never 
there's never a time where you're made to sit there and watch like uncomfortable um, sequences of like right. you know, someone getting hit. It's not like you're not sitting there going, all right, okay, I get it. it it's never just really more like, revels oh, it. come on, guys, don't yeah, do yeah. Oh, that's that's sad. But right. but because she plays her so tough, you 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 don't have to sit there and, and feel sorry for her in that sense. You don't feel like, oh, great, she's defenseless. You just go... God, that's a that's a terrible situation, and yeah, yeah, yeah. this is bad. Um, right. But I think the actors are all really good here. I think Margot Robbie is great. I think uh, Allison Janney is great. I think Sebastian Stan is really good, especially at the end when they show you tapes of these people, mm-hmm. and you yeah. realize, like, oh, wow, they do sound so much. Especially, like, Sebastian Stan and his friend. I was like, all right, these guys aren't like, what's up with these two? Right. But then you see the tapes, you're like, wow. That's exact. Th- yeah, these were real crazy. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. No, uh, so I, I, I'm always impressed when people can kind of pull off the the accents that they have in in this film Mm -hmm. um because i don't know i guess my ear is just better trained to hear you know fakeness in in that you know specific uh, you know american south kind of accents um but but yeah no i i I thought the actors all did a really great job and i think you know the the great thing about it even though i would say in times it's difficult to watch you know especially when we're talking about domestic abuse or um whatever um uh, the film never really never really sits in it it doesn't really sit there and like let you feel it it's more of a for lack of a better term, a punchline where it just sort of accentuates what, what we already know is a bad situation. It's like the cherry on top. It's not the reason it's a bad situation. And I think that that makes the difference because we're not sitting there like being shown this for the purpose of telling us it's bad. Mm -hmm. We're being shown it because it's, because it happened. Um, and, and so I think that's the difference, but but I think that, yeah, uh, Margot Robbie does a really great job. She's a very likable character. Um, so I was I was actually telling my mom about this movie because my mom was really big into figure skating and every every Olympics and all she watches. And, um, you know, so I knew she would be familiar with the story. Um, so I told her, like, hey, there's a movie on Hulu. You should check it out. Mm-hmm. And um, and she was like, oh, yeah, she's the girl that that. Uh, attacked Nancy Kerrigan. Nancy Kerrigan. And so like, like the public genuinely still, I think the, the main consensus is that she's guilty, that she did it. Yeah. Um, the film does not portray that. The film um, shows something very different. Um, how much of it is true, I think is probably up for debate. Um, yeah, I think that's know, part of the charm of the film too, because yeah. they, they even say like, I think there's one point they refer to it as the incident and, yes. and, um, <clears throat> and she even says like, everyone remembers it differently. Right. But like, but you are, you're presented a film with, I mean, she's probably the main narrator, yeah, but yeah, yeah. all of these people, the three of them for sure. And then, yeah. uh, I think, um, Sebastian Stan's friend, mm-hmm. I think at some point gets to chime in, but yep. they all essentially share responsibility for this narrative. Yep. So their, their narration is, is a, is, is a storytelling device in that yep. they're trying to acknowledge like this might not add up. It, you could see it as a cheat, but you could also see it as like, look, like we, we really can't know um, right. exactly how this all went down or the motivations behind it. So here's what everyone said. And here's the story we're going to stitch together based on right. what they said. Yeah. Plus we're, like you said, we're going to tell it from Tanya's perspective. So you know, if it's skewed, it's skewed in her favor. And that's, yeah, yes. uh, that's, that's what it is going to, that, you know, if she were telling it, that's how she'd tell it. That's um, the thing about these movies too. Like when you're going to tell a story like this, like it, it, sometimes it's almost best to have that person narrate it because then you really can't get nailed by some naysayer going, Oh, well, uh, that ain't what happened. Happened. yeah, that's not what happened. Cause it's yeah. just like, all right, I couldn't have shown any clearer other than making her wear a t-shirt that says I am the narrator this is my opinion. Yeah. Um, this is how I remember it. There's no other way to communicate to a dumb viewer <laughs> yes. that this is my version of events. Now yeah. you can watch the movie and decide that maybe I shouldn't be trusted or you can watch the movie and go, I believe her and believe my right. version of the events. Either way, I'm telling you that I didn't do this and it's up to you to decide whether you believe me. 
And I'll say this, the film does a good job of making this story seem believable. So so at the end of it, I'm not mm-hmm. stuck like going, that couldn't have happened. Like she's lying about this whole thing. Like the story makes complete and total sense. So could this be the truth? Maybe. Like, I don't know. Right. Um, and so, so yeah. Um, but yeah, everybody does a really great job here. Performances are all really great. Um, I love watching, you know, especially Alice and Janney in this film. And this is like, like, this is her role. Like she's in it and, um, completely believable as this person, um, from the first frame to the last. And, um, and yeah, I, I just think I, I just loved every second she was on screen. Um, all of the characters really, um, you know, I, 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 I sat here because I knew we were going to be reviewing this. And so I sat here earlier and I was like, all right, so what can I say that's like a negative about the film? But I started to think, you know, I don't really have anything I can truly nitpick about it. It's 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 not a five star movie. It's not a perfect movie, um, but it didn't do anything so egregious that I feel like I have to say like, oh, and then it did this, which was dumb. Um it, 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 like I said, everything makes sense. It's well told. The story is, you know, it's well directed. It's got a specific style that, you know, is interlaced with this. Um, if you want to call it like a Greek chorus of interviews, um, where we right. keep going back to, you know, the narrators, you know, talking, um, it, it, it it's so, so well done. Um, and I, I don't know that if somebody had tasked me with writing this, that I would have come up with half of this. Um, you know, I don't know that I would have said, Oh, well let's have like old VHS footage of them recounting the events. Like that's just so specific. And, and, and I love those little touches. The production design is fantastic. Um, you know, everything is so of the period and so perfectly like, uh, uh, almost like, uh, taking a jab at what Olympic, uh, figure skaters wear, um, yeah. like, like everything is just so well done. Um, yeah, I, I, I just, I, I really did like this movie a lot better than I thought I would. And so I had the opportunity of seeing this last year. Um, a, a little bit before its release at, um, a film festival. And, and so I, uh, saw the beginning of it and, uh, just the nature of my job at that festival. I also saw the end of it. Um, so I, I, I wanted to see it, but I kind of felt like, well, I've seen the ending, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And so I, I waited to a point where the ending was fuzzy enough that I couldn't quite remember what it was that I had seen. And so I, I feel like I did like start to remember it as I was watching it, but, but I was able to kind of live it for the first time. And, and, um, and so I really enjoyed watching it. Um, uh, and I, and I will say this, that there's a moment towards the end and, and, you know, I don't know, are, are we going to spoil this? Like, should we, should I, how specific should I be? Do you want to spoil this? Um, yeah, I mean, this is a true story and this is out for rant. So people, if you don't right. want to hear, if you don't want to hear us talk about the way this film ends, yeah, um, just scrub forward a little bit. Yeah. Scrub forward a little bit. We recommend seeing it. Um, um yeah. so, so there's a, a part towards the end where the judge rules that Tanya can't skate ever again, right. uh, professionally. And, and, and that to me was Margo's performance there was so yep. heartbreaking. Um, where she's like, no, like, let me go to jail. Like I'll do the time. Just don't take that away from me. And, and this whole movie has been about her identifying like at the deepest level of herself, she's a figure skater and you take that from her, then who is she? She's just a, a, an abuse victim from both her mother and her spouse. She's just a, a victim of a system who, you know, has said guilty when she's not, she's, she's everything is taken from her. And I think all of that is sold in that performance. And I think that that moment, um, was maybe the truest moment of the whole movie for me. And, and, and I just, I had to, I, I had to point that out because it's not often that you see, um, something so tragic that's, that, also seems so trivial 
um, right. like, okay, you can't skate again. Like that's almost like go to your room, like go time out. Mm, yeah. You know, it's so trivial, but you know that because that ruling is coming to this woman, yeah. it's, it's devastating. And, yeah. um, this was the only thing she had, like yeah. she did not, I mean, her father left. I mean, her father was her whole world. And even through yeah. all the tumult with her mother and her father left. <clears throat> so she's completely under her mother's power. And then she was completely under um, uh, Jeff's power in a way. Yeah. And and all she had was her success at skating. And yeah. that enabled her to get out from under both of them and try yeah. to better herself. Yeah. And the skating community still judged her for where she came from, yeah. um, and which she had no control over. Right. Um, and, and ultimately, that past still ultimately took the sport from her, despite how good she was at it. Yeah. Um, for something that, that they, there's no proof of her actually being involved in or having knowledge of yeah. and, and she has to hang it up. And so the, the, the one thing she was best at, um, you know, ultimately she, it was taken from her and yeah. it wasn't even her fault. Yeah, exactly. And then, uh, yeah, just, it's a just tragic devastating. story in that way. Yeah. Definitely. But the fact that she has a, that she has a positive outlook about it at the end of the film, you don't, yeah. you don't leave and go, God, you leave and go, all right, well, I guess she's just going to get back on that horse. And right. And, and even, you know, the, the text at the, at the end, she wants everyone to know she's a good mother. She's a good mother. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's like, so there's her identity now. Yeah. And, and that to me, I think that says a lot that doesn't leave you with that sour, bitter taste in your mouth. It, it leaves you thinking like, oh, okay, she's found something again. And, and it's not like, she's not limited to figure skating. Right. She is more than the the blades on her feet. So, yeah. Yeah, man. She's yeah, totally. also the blades on her heart. The the blades on, on the heart of... I don't know where I was going with that. Ice. I don't know what I was... The ice, <laughs> the ice around my heart has melted. Yes. All right. Well, um, all right. So that, 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 that's I, Tanya. So again, uh, so that is on Hulu and it is also, um, on iTunes as are, you know, obviously most of these films that are, yep. um, <clears throat> that we've been seeing. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what wouldn't be on iTunes. Right. Obviously, right. And also now, I guess, like you said uh, a week or so back, um, Redbox has streaming now too. Yeah. Yeah. Redbox which streaming. Is still crazy to me. I know. Right. But uh, I don't think it'd be much better. No. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Next film we're going to talk about. Um, I did not see. I, I I did see this film. Dustin, <laughs> did you see this film? I I did not see this film. All right. We are here to talk about Annihilation. Mm. <clears throat> so this is, I believe, um, the second film by Alex Garland, mm -hmm. um, who is the who was the writer director of Ex Machina. Uh, from a couple years ago that, that won a couple of awards. It introduced us to Alicia Vikander and, um, and to a really brilliant uh, science fiction uh, writer-director. So um, I was, I'd heard mysterious and positive things about Annihilation. So um, I, I figured I'd check it out. So I got this at the library as well. Um, and I watched it with my friend Tyler, who I, I only tend to watch mind-bending stories with. Um, so I called him up and said, all right, can watch Annihilation. <laughs> um, this uh, this <clears throat> film stars Natalie Portman um, and a little bit of uh, Tessa Thompson, Oscar Isaacs, um, um, uh, Jennifer Jason Lee, and a couple actors and actresses that I do not know um, by name. But it is um, it's the story of um, this mysterious. Uh, they call it the um, crap. What do they call it? The Shimmer. Um, that, this, that appears, I forgot what country it is. Um, and, um, Oscar Isaacs went into it, came out of it or went into it and, uh, and, and presumably died. Mm. And, uh, he's married to Natalie Portman, who's this, um, biologist. And, um, and so for like a year she's grieving him and then he shows up one day and he's real different, mm. but the mil the FBI basically sort of scoops him up and explains to her, like, here's where he was. Um, he actually made it out of the shimmer, but you know, he can't tell us really anything about it, blah, blah, blah. So they sent, she volunteers and they send in these four ladies with her to go into the shimmer and figure out what the hell it is because it's mm. expanding. It's doing weird stuff to radio signals, all that sort of, you know, alien vague junk. Um, 
so it's about these five women who go into the shimmer and uh, discover things. Um, I will not spoil the end of this film because this is really all kind of, this is, I don't know if that I could. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is a strange film. Um, and I gave it two stars. Ooh. And the reason I give it two stars is because this is one of those films where you're either smart or you're not. Mm. It presents you a series of events and asks you what you think of them. Ultimately. Mm. Um, I don't like that. I prefer a beginning, a middle, and an end to yeah. a story. I prefer you just telling me a story and me either accepting it or not. Mm. Um, so I'm not really a fan of ambiguity and uh, this much ambiguity in film. Um, I want the writer to tell me what he thinks and not just what I think. So I wasn't really into the lack of resolution that I will say occurs in this film. Yeah. Um, all the performance and performances in here are like really super duper zoned out. Like just mm. the way everyone talks, just sort of like, why would it be there? Or how, like these images you're seeing right now, like are not justice to the, the, the dullness of the film. Like that last picture looked like something interesting had just happened and it, and it <laughs> did, but like, then they walk around and just sort of, you know, just look at stuff. Um, mm. It just feels like Alex Garland told them to act sad and then and and they're just sort of all being mentally detached and and that's mm. that's maybe that's accurate but that's not really fun to watch it's it's dull to watch um yeah. i liked the cinematography i thought that was good um but the story is either a super high concept and i'm just not up there with it or it's completely a facade for the lack of an idea and it's just latching onto other science fiction imagery like this strange um shimmer um um, these, these kind of, these, these kind of messed up looking, um, um, growths on the sides of walls or, um, mm. weird things that happen with skeletons or other humanoid shapes or animal hybrids. Um, there's one or two times in this film where someone goes like, but I don't understand how could the crocodile have shark teeth? Like crocodiles don't breathe with sharks. And, the, and I'm just sitting there here. I'm like, you were inside a giant glowing orb. Like, right. you don't like, like, like the first time they said that, I was like, okay, there you go. You get one. And then someone goes, um, something else happens. It's like, but it's almost like it sounded like, like it was really this, but that that's impossible. Like someone says that's impossible. I think both times it was Mally Portman, like that's impossible. And I was like, you're kidding, right? About what's impossible right now. Right. Look at, look at where you are. Look at what you're seeing. I hate that man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's um, ridiculous. Again, it, it's really possible that this, this is all super brilliant and I'm just too stupid to understand it. But still, the average viewer m probably won't enjoy this film. Mm. Um, to me, the only expectation that it subverted was that I expected a complete story to be told and I didn't get it. Um, it's it just it's hard to it's hard to really explain exactly what I mean by that. This film is full of um, really interesting imagery, um, some pretty trippy effects, like especially towards the end of the film stuff starts happening and i swear dude it's like you're it's like you're you 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 took some ayahuasca and you're on a journey <laughs> i'm not kidding it's it's like the imagery is psychedelic wow. um in in a similar fashion not not directly the same but like on a scale of one to ten this is sort of what they were doctor strange in terms of like oh jesus mm. like what you're looking at yeah, like, like, mind whoa, bending, whoa. Like, weird, yeah. like strange things happen at the end of this film and um and they're provocative to see they're interesting to look at they're sort of striking visually but but you're still sort of like okay but i don't get it so are they what do you so what happened yeah and then yeah. it ends and you're like all right man like i'm, I'm not in <clears throat> i'm personally not in not into that um as much yeah. so um i don't know i again two stars it, it, it didn't really piss me off. Um, I'm, I'm only sort of skewing it. It did kind of piss me off, but I'm giving it two stars because I'm, I, it's pretty clear that the movie is artful. Mm. Um, and so I'm not going to say it's like a terribly crafted film. It's sure. not that kind of two star. It's just like, <clears throat> this is great, but this is a little highfalutin for, for the average moviegoer. They want to see a story where she goes in there, she learns some stuff, she comes out a different person and yeah. she does in a way, but 
it's not straightforward storytelling and that might bother people. It bothered, gotcha. it, it, it bothered me. And, and you know me, Dustin, like I'm not like a simpleton. I'm not, I'm not an idiot. I can pick up on subtle themes. Right. Exactly. And so maybe I'm much more of just the, maybe, maybe artistic filmmakers don't like people like me because I just want, I want the story a little bit more clear and they go, no nah, man, it's gotta be subtle. But to me, there's, there is a very thin line between subtlety and, and just bullshitting me. Well, no, I agree. And, and I, I, I agree because I like a, a screenwriter and a filmmaker to take a stance, yeah. um, you know, say like, something, like, tell me I, what you're, what you think. Like, sure. It can be, you know, I don't know, artful or whatever. And you can say like, Oh, what do you think? Like, how does this make you feel audience? But at the same time, I'm like, well, why did you bother writing this if you didn't have something to say? Yeah. And if you do have something to say, it didn't come through. And if it doesn't come through, then you're not a good writer. Yeah. And and, and that's the thing. Like I liked Ex Machina um, and, yeah, and yeah. Ex Machina was a lot more straightforward. Like when it ends, like it's very clear what happened. Sure. You know, it's not as symbolic or airy as this film is. Um, and I just, it's kind of like Mother. Yeah. Like in Mother, it was, Mother was pretty clear about what it was trying to say. Mm -hmm. So fine, it gets points for that. But not really, because it, it said a bunch of things and it didn't really settle on one of them. It was like, yeah. it was just sort of like a like a, a, a vomit bag of ideas yeah. and an allegory that was so blatant and so... Um, so heavy connected, handed. heavy handed that, that it didn't, that it overshadowed characters and there was no mm. character. So this film has character. So this does a better job than mother in terms of like these are characters, but most of them are archetypes. Um, yeah. Natalie Portman, pretty blank. Um, yeah. There's a subplot with some other scientist in here that really goes nowhere. It just maybe adds a tad bit of guilt to her character. Mm. Um, but like, ultimately I'm just sort of like, I don't really care about you other than you're a human being who is at times in mortal peril. But, but like that doesn't even really count in movies because right. every character I see does that. Right. Exactly. It's kind of bottom of the barrel. Yeah. So, um, I, yeah, I give annihilation two stars again. Like I'm okay. sure that, that more learned people who might be watching this show probably think I'm an idiot. I'm willing to submit to that possibility that maybe I'm an idiot, but, but I, I'm not going to pretend to, to understand this film or to like it just because I feel like I'm supposed to, to keep my film card. Right. Um, you know, that's, it's just, it's not, you know, visually stimulating and airy and thoughtful. Those are great. But if we're going to put it on the triangle where, you know, you can't have, you can't ever have all three things. You only have two things. Mm -hmm. It's like th what y'all sacrificed was, watchable or entertaining, you know, <laughs> like it's, you know, it's like, a, Oh, you know, you got, you, there's a woman and she, and she's, she's hot and she's smart and, she, but she's crazy. It's like, you can only pick, you can only pick two of those things. It's like, all right, do I want someone who's like really hot, but, 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 and crazy, but she's stupid. Or do I want hot and smart, but crazy. Or do I want, you know, crazy and smart, but ugly. I don't know. Anyway, like it's just, yeah, yeah. it's one, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, yeah. I think you, you're, you're picking up what I'm throwing down. It's yeah, just, yeah on the triangle of things, this, this just left out, um, watchability and, right. and, and, um, relatability. Sure. So that's annihilation. I gotcha. Um, yeah. Um, let's move forward, but let's say goodbye to the YouTube people, Dustin. Bye YouTube people. Bye YouTube people. Um, if you want to see the rest of this video podcast, you can go over to patreon.com and, uh, toss in a dollar and you can get the rest of this video show. Um, and you could have gotten it last week if you had done that right away. So presumably, if you're on YouTube and you're watching this, we got episode 171 up in Patreon right now. What are we hey. talking about? That's for us to know. You need to find you need out, to dude. Find out. Yeah. But um, what there is right now is if you're watching on YouTube, then right now available is the full audio of this show. Um, and that is available on various um, podcast platforms. Um a bunch, too many to count. Wherever you get your podcast, we are on most, if not all, of the um, distribution uh, platforms. So if you want to see the rest of the video, like I said, go over to patreon.com slash supercast, toss in a dollar, and um, and you can get the rest of the show. Um, so we will be right back with the rest of the show for the Patreon folks. Yeah.
Okay. Okay. So anyways, let's talk about, um, well, Dustin. Yes. Let's talk about Won't You Be My Neighbor, okay. which is a new documentary yes. about Fred Rogers. Yes. Who is Fred Rogers, Dustin? Fred Rogers is uh, the host, creator of um, uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, um, a, a long-running kids show um, that I think all of us are familiar with. Um, you know, I didn't really grow up watching... Uh, the neighborhood, but I did, uh, I saw bits and I didn't, but I saw bits and pieces of it. Um, you know, it was shit out of Mr. Rogers, man. Did you? Yeah, Yeah. I, I, I didn't, you know, I knew of him, I guess as I, as I grew up, you know, that he was that guy and, and, and I, and I learned to kind of follow him later. Um, but it wasn't necessarily because of the show. It was just because I started to respect him as a person. Mm -hmm. Um, the show, like I said, I had seen bits and pieces of, so, um, I certainly had a, had a, like a framework for it. I just didn't, I I just wasn't, that wasn't my cup of tea. Um, and, and that's okay. Um, so Won't You Be My Neighbor is, um, a documentary, um, the life and legacy of, uh, Fred Rogers, um, Fred Rogers uh, passed away, I believe, in 2003, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so um, he's he's uh, he's been gone for quite a while, uh, but this movie is incredibly timely. Um, it's in limited release right now. I highly recommend uh, you to get out there and see it. Um, this is not a perfect movie, but I, I'm just going to have to give it five stars anyway. Um, it's it's so timely, and it's just a breath of fresh air. Um, so for those of you who, I guess, are a little less in the know, sort of like I was, um, Fred Rogers... Um, was a man who uh, initially was headed into the seminary. He was a uh, looking to be a Presbyterian minister, um, and he felt this calling on his life to um, use television um, as a means to spread love and spread positivity and um, help kids. Uh, not just express themselves, but process through things that uh, maybe other children's programs were trying to shy away from. So, yeah. um, Fred he wanted to confront difficult feelings and, mm-hmm. and and try to actually overcome them and, and and learn from them rather than, like you said, run from them. Yeah, just like pretend they don't happen or exactly. You know, he, he took risks that other shows weren't weren't taking. Exactly. So, um, you know, they'll do like an episode on like, what does assassination mean? Right. Because it's, it, it's so almost counterintuitive. Like you would say, that's not kid friendly, but life isn't kid friendly. And, right. and I think Mr. Rogers knew that. And he, and he said, you know what, let's talk about it. Like, let's l- let you feel an emotion and and let's talk through it and process that together as a community. Um, you know, he had. Um, let me see if I can find his name here. But um, uh, maybe better if I just look up uh, Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. But um, which I'm sorry, who are you looking for? Uh, the the police officer, Officer uh, Clemens, I think. Yeah, is? Officer Clemens. I can't remember the actual actor's name, but um, yeah. and of course I can't. Uh, find it right now. But anyway, God, the point is, um, uh, officer Clemens, uh, you know, came on the show, um, at a very specific time. Um, it was during, um, all of the civil rights marches and, um, it was, it was very much a statement by, uh, Fred that they were going to be inclusive. They were going to, um, you know, they weren't going to segregate. And so, and so, you know, at this time when people are throwing bleach in public pools to get rid of African Americans, um, Fred goes on TV and soaks his feet in a kiddie pool with officer Mm -hmm. Clemens. Yep. Um, he very much, he, he was not hiding. He was not, 
um, sugarcoating anything. Um, the adults knew what that meant and the kids just saw it as obvious. He said, Hey, here's a guy who's out delivering, uh, or not delivering, who's out, um, you know, patrolling. And so why don't I wash his feet? Like, why don't I put his feet in the cold water? It's hot day. Like, and the kids are just like, yeah, duh. And all the adults are like, yo, that's, that's insanely, uh, you know, progressive. That's controversial Um, almost, you know? Right. Exactly. It's weird because like you've got, you have examples, like, I mean, that's straight out of the Bible, like Jesus washing, washing the feet. But like the great thing about Mr. Rogers was that he explained, um, progressive and, and, um, and kind um, themes that are obvious to children yes. because children are so much less inhibited than we are. They don't come with any baggage. The only yeah. there's a there's a crazy there's that oh god definitely not crazy. There's an old um, I just mean like a a a, 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 a an s- abnormal or uncommon. There's a th- th- well no there's a um I was just gonna say there's a typical um, saying of mm. um, and you see it on the internet a lot, especially like a year ago, um, was like, uh, that racism is not inherent in people. It is taught to them. Yeah. Yeah, It's learned behavior. Kids aren't born racist. Um, they just look at other kids and go, there's a kid and they don't see color. It is, that is something that they learn. And so all of these things he's talking about are obvious to children. And it's one of those things where, and I certainly don't think that kids are, 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 are smart or, or, um, or usually right. But Mm. one of the things that kids definitely do as human beings is they don't allow strange ideologies to divide them from other kids. Yeah. And so he's explaining things to them that they already know, but he's sort of reminding them that as an adult, I'm reassuring you that these things you're thinking are okay because they're okay. I'm washing this guy's feet. Some people might think that's weird, but that's because they're dumb. Right. Exactly. And you're not dumb. You're smart. You're a kid. This is a human being. He's out there working hard. I don't care what color his skin is. I'm washing his feet. And that's just the way it is. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, the, the whole thing, like the, so the first week was about, um, you know, on the, on that, it wasn't like the full first full week. There was an episode in the, in the first week of the show, the very first week where they're dealing with, um, the, um, the, the, I guess, what is he? King, Friday the 13th or something like that. The, the puppet, um, you mean? The puppet, yeah. Oh, he, yeah. Uh, in the episode, name. he's um, uh, going to build a wall to keep people out. Um, and and so, you know, regardless of where you stand politically, this is obviously a timely, you know, message. And it's like, it's like this movie came out at the perfect time yeah. to remind you that nothing is new under the sun. That, that these things are things that have always happened and always will happen. And, and in fact, um, they even sort of in the movie with like, what would, what would Fred say about today? And they're talking to Fred's, um, Fred's wife and, um, and his kids and, you know, like, what, what would, what would your dad, what would your husband be saying today? And, and they all, you know, it's not, it's not political. What they said was, he'd be trying to find the common ground. He'd be trying to Mm -hmm. heal the divide. Um, he'd be trying to show kindness, um, in and above anything else. And, and, and what that, what that means is, uh, because my first thought is like, well, like that wouldn't be on TV today, you know, but it's like, it's like, but Probably people didn't want him on TV when he was on TV. Right. Um, so <laughs> who's but, this strange old hippie spreading peace and love? Right, but he, but and they even said like dudes like a card carrying Republican like as conservative as it gets. Yeah, but he just loves people and yeah. he wants everybody to feel like they have inherent value and you know are 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 just loved because they are a person. Um, and, and, you know, everything else doesn't matter. Um, so, you know, there's an episode where he, um, is talking to a a kid, uh, in a wheelchair who, um, has a, you know, uh, degenerative disease and, and, um, yeah, I mean, it's just so, 
so poignant and 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 the film will choke you up i mean it, it's all like everybody in our theater which was surprisingly crowded for a movie in limited release um was like tearing up and choking up and you could just feel it in the room that mm. either either you were fighting it or you were like making those weird like <laughs> like breathing noises <laughs> like right before you're gonna like just bawl your eyes out uh. um because because the the absolute love that he had for kids and that he had for people in general um is absolutely unparalleled on television and and he he had very strong opinions about what kids watched and that that there's a lot of harm that we're doing to kids by allowing them to watch certain things and and feed into certain ideologies um but he he was always concerned that kids need to see love they need to see it shown and and if they're not going to get that in their home then they should be getting it on television and right. by god he was going to give it to them and um so so fred uh grew beyond mr rogers neighborhood and grew into someone that when there was a national tragedy well, who do we get? Who do we call? Like, you know, the news stations, who do we call? We call Fred. We get Fred out here to talk about 9-11. Like we need his voice right now. And, and, and that's just so, um, I think encouraging that if it's done correctly and if it's done consistently and, and, you know, Mr. Rogers neighborhood started in 1968 and 9-11 is, a long time after 1968 and and if it's done consistently over a lifetime you will by the time the country needs your opinion um you will have garnered their respect mm-hmm. um and and you don't have to uh do anything cheap you don't have to do anything uh gimmicky all you have to do is just be genuine yeah. Uh, you know, you never heard anything about, oh, Mr. Rogers went out drinking last night and got in a car wreck and punched a paparazzi like yeah. like you hear with all of the celebrities now. Um, he lived what he taught and there was it was obvious. So so the movie is incredibly encouraging, incredibly inspiring, incredibly moving. Um, nothing short of perfectly timed. Um, you know, and in a world where the news media and social media and just people in general like to, uh, cast everybody in the worst possible light, um, we are introduced to, or reintroduced rather to Fred Rogers, who looks for the best in every person and reminds even adults, uh, that they can still think like children. They can still, um, you know, behave like children. And I don't mean that in an immature way. I mean right. that in, in a free, uninhibited, uh, kind, generous, trusting way. Unburdened uh, from cynicism. Un- exactly. And, yeah. and, and all you have to do is just tap into that and love each other, love yourself. Yeah. And, um, and, and that's all there is to it. So, so the movie's great. The movie's, you know, like I said, a breath of fresh air. It's something that, right. um, you know, if you are like me and probably like a lot of people, you're just tired of the divide, um, yeah. regardless of what side of the aisle you're on. Um, I just feel like a lot of people out there are just tired. Um, I think you know. people, people don't want to fight each other. Yes. Um, inherently. there's, <clears throat> there's some people who do, yeah. um, and they're the those, outliers. And they're the outliers. They're yeah. they're loud and 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 they're they're they get they get attention. But the majority of people, yeah. um, this isn't even politically, but like the majority of people don't like conflict. Yes. Um, yeah. We like to think that we're prepared for conflict. That like we'll take care of business if conflict happens. Yeah. But most people are just want to get along. They want to either be left alone or they want to be able to commune with each other yeah. and without feeling like something is about to be taken from them. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, without going too much off the rails, I think you'd agree that what we have today is a lot of people who feel like something's being taken from them or, or, or something, something's not fair or yeah. this or that. And, and it, it's essentially, it's just a lot of fear, a lot of fear right. of loss happening, yeah. um, fear of any of all, all kinds of levels of injustice. And I think today 
that Fred Rogers wouldn't be, he would, I don't even think he'd be at like a protest. I don't think he'd even mm-hmm. be out there protesting, even if it was for something like, um, you know, higher pay for teachers because right. he would see a protest in itself, I think is inherently like, uh, this is still a bit like, you know, um, aggressive. I'll just say something about it on my show. Like I'll write, a, I'll write a skit about it on the show yeah. and, and that's how I'm going to, you know, get the a positive message about teachers out there, but I'm not going to go stand there and chant with a bunch of people with pickets because that's not how I want to spend my time. That's yeah. the example I would want to follow. Um, I don't want to rally a bunch of people against a bunch of other people. I want to see, I want to see people shaking hands and working together Correct. and, and maybe going, all right, we might not agree exactly how we want something to be done, but let's just start small and yeah. let's talk to each other and treat each other like, like human beings. Right. You know, there, there's a really poignant moment and I, I don't want to spoil too much of the film, but there's, there's a really poignant moment I'll bring up, which is, um, one of the, one of the interviewees was talking about, uh, Fred's funeral. Um, and the Westboro church, uh, picketed his funeral, you know, God hates you, whatever. Um, and, and, and this guy was saying like, I exited his funeral and saw them. And he was like, the very first thing he thought was like, what would, what would Fred do? Like, where would he gravitate? And he was just like, he saw the kids with that group. And how sad those kids looked. They had been indoctrinated into something that was evil and, mm. and, and how sad they looked. And he said, that's where Fred would go. If Fred were here at his own funeral, he wouldn't be in there. He'd be out here looking those children in the eyes and saying, I love you. And, and that's, mm. and that's, um, I think one of the most poignant moments of the whole thing for me, you know, it, it it's this unconditional love that that I think goes a long way. And, um, you know, Fred wrote almost 900 episodes of Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. Um, and there's you can't do that and not not leave a legacy. And, and I think we're just very lucky that that legacy was unmarred, unsmeared. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was a legacy of of just love and kindness and um that probably will never be matched again in in television uh so um unfortunately so anyway but it is a great movie um i know i've said a couple things right here at the end that's like oh lord like that's so heavy but it is a really encouraging and and inspirational movie so um I, i highly recommend it um if you do not get to see it in theaters i know it was only playing at like a couple near me i had to travel a little bit to get to this theater um so if it's not playing around you it'll certainly be streaming at some point um or at red box please pick it up yeah man yeah Ooh. yeah as a, as a powerful endorsement yes person. yes 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 um i think we should just end the episode there let's do it um so yeah everybody thank you for listening um if you uh want, again want to check out the full video episode go to patreon consider supporting the show for very little amounts of money uh, full audio on, on all the uh, podcast platforms, partial video on YouTube. Um, and pretty soon some commentaries, uh, coming to the Patreon page as well. Um, I lined up a couple, um, Dustin, myself and, um, and you and I need to, need to schedule some, I don't even know what, what, what do you want to, what do you, can I put you on the spot? What do you want to do a commentary for? What do you think would be fun for you and me to, to talk over? I think we should do something that's not a great movie. Okay. Um, I, I think maybe the first one should be something that's generally either a bad, mm-hmm. maybe not a bad movie, but something that's, that's easy to kind of pick at. Um, right. you know, if we did the Godfather, it'd be like, oh, this is a good scene. And then we just watch it. You know what I mean? Cinematography. <laughs> right. So, so like if we <laughs> instead pick like, you know, I mean, even just something that's personally grading, like for me, you know, Justice League, um, mm-hmm. I really don't want to watch that again, but I would for a commentary. Sure. Um, or, or, you know, even if we wanted to pick like, um, like the first Daredevil movie. <laughs> yeah. Or, or like you know, the last airbender from M night Shyamalan or something like, like just something that's generally fairly, fairly yeah. bad. Yeah. Um, then we can, I think have a lot of fun with it. Um, and then later we can kind of do something that's a little better, but I think as or I say better, like, you know, a little less 
easy to pick apart. Sure. Um, then we can we can kind of uh, cut our teeth anyway, just picking some fun stuff apart. Right. Yeah, that'd be fun. We definitely need to figure out a time to do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, perhaps another Wednesday night. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, that's going to be it for the Hoopercast uh, this time around, kiddos. So catch us next week. You have a good weekend. Get out there, see some good movies. Do it. Or stay home, see some good movies. Um, and uh, just see some good movies and uh, yeah. check out any of the recommendations we've given you um, for uh, for these films. All right. Take care, everybody. See you later. Woo.